This is the heat of the Prince Albert Challenge Cup for the University Cox Fours. On the left-hand side, on the Berkshire Station, is University of Bristol. On the right-hand side is University of Exeter as they drive away from the start down Temple Island. So Bristol won the Temple in 1991, but they're here in the Cox Four. It's the only time they've won this regatta. It seems to be moving away from Exeter. Yeah, they've had a really good start there. You can see nearly, nearly a length, and it's only just crept past the end of the islands. So that's a really impressive start there from Bristol. You can see, actually, if you, if you compare the crews based on the results they've had already this year, clearly Bristol have had the better of the, the two seasons. You know, they were second in the championship Cox Fours and met and won the academic fours. Uh, in, in, that, in that same event. So ultimately, they are a, a crew of pedigree in form. So it, it, this is not altogether unexpected. Yeah, so Bristol raced in the, the top level at Bucks, whereas Exeter raced in the intermediate fours and came sixth at Bucks, which is the university championships. And you can see the difference here, can't you? I mean, a big bit of wash there coming off some launch. But, I mean, this is an interesting one, isn't it? Because you would probably have predicted this margin at the start. But for Bristol, you're still going to do it properly. Exactly. You've still got to come out here, execute, and, and stay to your race plan as true as you can. And ultimately, it's all well and good looking at what should and shouldn't happen on paper. But you, like you say, Adrian, you've got to come out here, perform, and, and, and Henley, anything can happen. It really is as true as that in the one-on-one, -on -one really sort of odd racing dynamic that Henley provides. Anything can happen. But Bristol have come out here, true professionals, and, and you can see here they've, they've put five or six lengths into Exeter, who, fair play, turned up, you know, have had a good row, but they're just not good enough. Yeah, the Exeter crew has got two boys from Abingdon, two from Kings Worcester and one from Leander and one of the guys learned to row in Surrey University, Exeter University, sorry. Ah, OK, OK. Always good to see clubs and, and universities encouraging people to get into the sport. And I think that's what university rowing is about, isn't it? There is quite a lot of schoolboy girls who then go to university and row, but there is lots of room for people to just turn up. Exactly, exactly. The, the strength and quality of some of these programmes means that if you're someone who, who has the physiological gifts to be a good rower, you can turn up on, on Freshers' Week and, and, and get in a boat, you know, within the next three or four days, and that could be the start of something really special. Yeah, Bristol here doing a really good job. They're rowing really nicely there. Really clean blade work as they row off the screen to the right-hand side. Yeah, the Prince Albert is a really competitive event this year. You know, the dominance of Oxford Brooks in the Temple Challenge Cup has led a lot of crews to try and stack their four instead of student level, and that means that there's a lot of really excellent crews this year in the Prince Albert. So expect a, a, a stiff competition as the, as the, uh, as the event unfolds. Yeah, and some of these smaller programmes, they just haven't got enough people rowing to produce lots and lots of eights, where they probably have enough to produce a good, some good fours to be competitive. Exactly. It's that they always say you need 16 athletes to produce a good eight, and that's true of fours as well. You probably need eight, eight athletes to produce a good four because you need a second four to push them along. So this Bristol University crew here at the Met Regatta came second in Championship Fours and really showing their pedigree here, aren't they? It's a really nice, simple way they row. So how do the Cox keep themselves in the boat? All you can see is a little bit of cap and a little bit of eyes. What's happening under the boat? Well, they're trying to steer the boat first and foremost, but they'll also be relying on the communication of, I assume, the bowman to tell them, you know, what's unfolding because in an even more bizarre twist. They're facing the right way, but they can't see the opposition who's behind them. So they'll need to rely on the on the basically the optics of what the, the crew can see to relay communication so that they can then call the race as and when they see it. But essentially they'll be steering that boat, they'll have a little microphone so that that's fed back to the crew and they'll probably have a rate you know, you can see the little black thing above their face. And it's a similar posture to a Formula One racing car, isn't it? They're just <laughs> lying flat down, feet in front of them. Yeah, not sure the speeds are the same, but certainly the posture is similar. And here we have Bristol University coming up to the finish line of the heat of the Prince Albert Challenge Cup. Growing really well, making quite a clinical job of that against the University of Exeter. And here's Exeter University crossing the line. And there we have Bristol. Good row by Bristol University, cheering on Exeter University.